on this episode of Bet Bath and Beyond. Andrew and I, well, we talk. Listen, this is the first time that we've ever done intros before the actual episode. Usually, we record an entire episode and then whoever has, you know, whoever has, we switch it off, whoever has the intro goes and we get to talk about because this is post episode what we just talked about. This is completely different since we're doing video. I have to guess what we're going to talk about based off of some notes that we did five minutes before the actual podcast. So I'm going to guess that we're going to talk about Rizzo betraying us, the Cubs, to go to the Yankees. We're going to talk about Russ going to the Lakers. Uh, we're going to watch a Zed run race horse because I got a horse that I've started racing and she is, mwah, she's beautiful. She's a stud. Her name's a choice scotch. We're going to watch her win a race, uh, and the rest is going to be a mystery. So, Andrew, start playing the music. This is also new. And um, three, two, one, go. I am Ian Peacock. And I am Andy Heidemann. And I hate sports betting. No matter what you say, I'm betting 100 on it tonight. <laughs> And we're in. Welcome to Bet Bath and Beyond. Hello. Brought to you by B3T Sports. <laughs> yeah, brought to you by B3T Sports. How's it going? Good, Andrew. Now, Andrew, before we start this second video podcast in our history of podcasts, I want to make sure two things. Yes. One, that there's no echo. There was a there, there is was a, no echo. There was a big echo for the first five to ten minutes on last episode. I I feel like you need to address that publicly, to be honest. And sure. I feel like you need to address our listeners what exactly happened uh, because they want answers. Well, I can I can tell you one thing. Uh, it wasn't my fault. I was happy. <laughs> um it was the russians <laughs> no um we've never done this before okay sue me like we got uh, we 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 went and did it and it all things considered fairly smooth we caught i caught the issue five minutes in it was resolved i berated myself in the video edit so i mean it's funny that you say everything else went smooth because that was our second take because the first time we did technically yes we did a whole but, 20 minutes before we realized that we weren't recording properly but you know what you're right this is the second episode video is integral <laughs> into our future here at b3t sports and bed bath and beyond uh we're working on the site the b3t sports.com yes, website we are. Lots of updates on that. Go check it out. Obviously, all our uh, podcasts are hosted there, as well as on Podbean. You can find them. New articles are going to be hitting the site very, very soon. It is that time of year. We got football coming up. I cannot wait for fantasy camp videos fantasy. and fantasy football, the best part of football. Uh, I did watch some of our uh, video podcasts uh, on Tuesday, our Tuesday episode. You one vain thing, bitch. One thing that I did realize is that I have the most resting bitch face of all time. <laughs> I had no idea. I, in fact, I cringed. I cringed at, and maybe it was because I was tired and exhausted and it was our second take, but I, there were some points in that podcast where I was like, holy shit, dude, I have the, I have the worst resting bitch <laughs> face. I look like such a fucking asshole. Dude, well, uh, when I was rewatching it, I was like, my camera is such in such a <laughs> shitty spot. Like it's like it's like up here, and I'm like, it's kind of looking down. I fixed it this also, time. Now I've got. Oh, I, I have my fucking fiddle leaf plant. My fucking fiddle leaf. You can kind of see in the corner over there. The shot. But like, it was completely horizontal. Like that's not how plants should be. P plants shouldn't be growing no. sideways. They should be growing vertical. And that plant, I mean, it, well, like I according to who though. I, the the experts the the green thumbs sure. of the, the biologists world. the green thumbs of the world which I am not I am not a green green thumb I'm uh, not either so uh, now that we have all that out of the way let's talk baseball talk baseball Andrew I will bring it up oh, he, Rizzo is on the screen Rizzo okay good yeah so Andrew will be putting visuals 
uh, for this for this episode. When it makes sense. Is he in a Yankee uniform in the picture? Uh, no. Actually, it's kind of funny. I I Googled Russell Westbrook in a Lakers uniform. A wall of pictures. I Googled <laughs> Anthony Rizzo in a Yankees jersey. Not a single fucking picture. Uh, you hate to see it. Just my camera roll. You hate to see it. Now, Rizzo got traded officially to the Yankees. The Yankees have him. I'm a. I'm. I'm honestly. I'm just upset to be honest because well, that's twofold, he is right? Twofold Cause, meaning. Well, because one, Rizzo's no longer on the Cubs. Yeah. And two, he's on the Yankees. <laughs> well, the Yankees. If if I put on my Orioles hat on, uh, because I'm from Baltimore. If I put on my Orioles hat. That's a problem because I hate the Yankees and we play them a lot and they're obviously in our league. Now, being a Cubs fan, uh, not that big of a deal. It's not like he went to the Cardinals or the Brewers or the Dodgers. Fuck your Dodgers. It's not like he went to any of those teams in the I'd National League. Sick. I'd have been so happy if he went to the Dodgers, but there's no way. So it, it does suck. The Yankees aren't really a huge rivals for the Cubs. Um, it just sucks because he's part of our big three. I mean, you got Bryant, you got Rizzo, and you got Baez. And we all knew, us being fans of the Cubs, we all knew we it wasn't going to last. Ricketts, the owner of the Cubs, couldn't pay everyone. Rizzo declined an extension earlier this year. I think it was $70 million uh, for five years That's extension. So it is so much money, but he could get more. Obviously, the Yankees were willing. Right. To, to take on that that contract because he is going to get paid. Uh, and now all eyes are on Bryant and Baez, and I'm just praying. When is I'm praying we keep both of them, Andrew. I'm praying we keep both of them. But well, you might be able it. to pay both of them. You were Maybe. not going to be able to pay all three. No, definitely not. Not all three. Rizzo's the captain. It just sucks. It just sucks that he's leaving. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I'm, I'm giving the captain to Baez. Javi Baez, I'm giving it. He's so cool. He probably doesn't even want it. El Mago. But uh, that sucks. It sucks all around. I want to get him in front of it. I bring up. Usually you bring up baseball on this podcast. I brought it up Yeah, now. but so, well, it's easier to do it now because like that, cause if you're in a bad mood at the end of the podcast, you don't want me going. Do you want to talk about baseball? Yeah, exactly. You're right. So, <laughs> okay. So well, I got that out of that well, way. While we're here. Uh, Baltimore has a solid 35 wins. Why are we uh, they are, Why are we talking about this? Well, I'm just saying, uh, cause, cause the best part is they're not even the worst team in baseball. That's why we're talking about it. Uh, Arizona blows. <laughs> Diamondbacks are all, uh, Dodgers, Diamondbacks are yeah, Dodgers are three games back. Uh, the Cubs are, here's the thing. I mean, like, not that it's, I mean, the, the Cubs are in a bad spot division wise, but they still have 50 wins on the season. Like that's not, it's by no means is it like over. It's just, it's I mean, over. like. I think it's over. Well, you, I think it's over. Their whole, I mean, Milwaukee has 61 wins, but I mean, Cincinnati has 54. St. Louis is 51. I mean, that's like, you're not. It's yeah. over. Andrew. It's over. It, you know what? I'm not even going to pretend right. like we, it, I knew before the all-star break that the Cubs were out of it. And I knew that we were going to take some hits. Rizzo was the first hit. I'm expecting at least one more big punch to the face. We'll see what happens. Bryant didn't play in today's game. Uh, so neither Bryant or Rizzo played in today's game. So I'm a little nervous about Bryant, Chris Bryant, what his future is right. in Chicago. Guess we'll oh, see. Man. While, while we're talking about this, it looks like, uh, wait, I'm so confused. This can't be the first round. It says that the NBA draft is going on right now. I would not. Who cares? Who cares about yeah, who that? Gives a fuck? No, I never paid attention to the NBA draft. Not one year have well, I ever I, cared. I paid attention to that, or the year that Zion got picked. Who was the number one pick that year? I'm pretty sure it was Zion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, speaking of NBA, Andrew. Speaking of the NBA. The fucking Lakers. Yes. They, uh, they did a switcheroo. They traded Kuzma and Caldwell Pope and the 22nd overall pick this year to the Wizards to get Russell Westbrook. Mm. Mr. Double, Mr. Double Zero. Now, do you have the picture of Russell Westbrook in a Lakers jersey on the screen for all of us to see? Uh, I'm trying. We're going to see how... Uh, Able, Andrew? Andrew. Done. Oh, Andrew. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We uh -oh. promised the people visuals, Andrew. Oh, we promised no. The people. 
Andrew, we promised the people visuals. We did. We did promise the people visuals. Uh, no, it's coming. I, uh, it's I coming. It. There we go. <laughs> it's coming. For all of you waiting on this, I'm sure you haven't seen it at all yet on Twitter or Instagram or anywhere else on the web. Just know that we've got you covered. Andrew, it's coming. Andrew's going to put it, it up for everyone to see okay, on, boom, the, on the screen. Boom. Boom. And we're going to transition. There it is. It's there on the screen. Okay. It's also <laughs> worth noting. It's also worth noting that if you're listening to this, because most of our listeners, because this is only our second video podcast episode, right. most of our listeners listen through, through us via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple, right. right, Google podcast maybe not even google podcast but mostly spotify and apple i know one person who listens to it <laughs> via google podcast I, and they don't update it all the time i mean like i feel like it doesn't pull the data like sometimes we'll release an episode and somebody's like hey uh I tried to listen to you guys did you guys stop posting i'm like no we've never missed we've a fucking never missed never a fucking missed, episode we've never missed a day tuesdays over and Fridays, a year we've never missed an episode day never so uh but, yeah, but anyway this is on the screen it's a good point to know that you can watch us on YouTube now if you want to see our fucking faces and see Russ in a Lakers should. jersey. In a Lakers jersey. I'm, you can't find it anywhere else, right? You can't find it anywhere else uh, on the Not web. yet. No, can't find it. We have the copyright to uh, Russ in a Lakers jersey until he actually steps on the court. Um, As a so matter yeah. of actual basketball and how this will – I mean, like, if, you know, him – Anthony Davis and LeBron are all healthy. I mean, they should be competing just like with the Nets. They should be competing with the the Bucks. I mean, they're all supreme athletes. I don't know if I the thing is like I don't know if I'd put them over the Nets, but I mean, adding Russ definitely helps these guys. I mean, they need something. But I don't know if AD or LeBron will be completely healthy for a full season. I really have no faith that that'll happen. I love the move personally just because i love russell westbrook as an athlete uh i just i love him uh fuck matt lack who is our <laughs> b3t sports blogger he actually came on as a guest to one of our right. podcast episodes and was ranking the top 40 players in the nba and where did he have russell westbrook I don't. Was he even on the list? I he no wasn't idea. even on the list, Andrew. Okay, I, I don't, just, think, I don't he think, think he was even on the list. I don't think he was even on the list. Ben That's Simmons ridiculous. was for twenty. He's Ben clearly Simmons. Ben Simmons. Number that 20. aged like fucking milk, by the way. <laughs> uh, oh, and that's I'm why he's saying, fired. And, we had to fire him. We had to fire Matt. <laughs> <Lack. laughs> and here's the thing: Russ is an athletic freak. He started the season shaky, without a doubt. He really did. I know. I get it. But. Oh, come on triple doubles he's triple doubles, triple doubles baby. he's the triple and, double king and like and lebron is i mean lebron can score he's not like the greatest scorer of all time he i mean he's just longevity has him scoring a ton of points but like he is a great passer like that's probably the best part of his game is this how he sees the court and he's a great passer that's great for people who can score in the paint like ad and people who can fucking ball like russ I just I feel like this really adds to them. They just get a couple perimeter shooters for like to you know fill out the rest of the team. Do you have the blur background on? It, yeah, I do. It's weird because why do you have it? Because you just have a plain ass wall behind you. So what is this even doing? Well, so it doesn't really do anything at the moment. <laughs> but um, I I have it on there uh, all the time because when I used to use this camera, I would uh, I sat in a way that like, I had a bunch of shit behind me. Like I had a, an open closet with like computer parts and all that sort of stuff. So now I just, I haven't switched it back. I am going to do a nice little uh, office thing though. We're going to hang some jerseys. I got some football, little pop figures. It's going to look, you know, like an actual podcast set. Hopefully. Sure. Why not? I have a clock, I have a mirror and I have a dying fiddle leaf plant in the corner. Yeah. It's all you really need in life. Um, Actually, I have, I have some pop figurines I might, I might bring out. Okay. Oh, you know. So, next in so that's sports. that's basketball. That's all, that's all basketball that, there is. That's all basketball, and that's all baseball. Baseball, basketball, check it off the list for this podcast. Now, I feel like we have to talk the Olympics because it only comes every four years. Every yes, five years right now because of COVID and it didn't happen last year. What would you say off the top of your head is the most important Olympic story right now? Because I'll, I'll put an image up. 
Well, I mean, we haven't even discussed this off air when we actually plan these yeah. episodes. But if you don't have so some, a wild if you don't have Simone Biles up there, her image, go home, go home, Andrew, and go home. end the podcast. Well, why? Why should she be on our screen? She quit on the country. Okay. All right, all right. Well, that's just <laughs> we're just gonna die. That that, that won't. We're just good. gonna dive right into the deep end. What is your, Andrew? What is your real take on the matter about how that she bowed out of uh, the Olympics, the Olympic team? And the U.S., the rest of the team, had to substitute for her. They only are allowed to get rid of one score. Only one score in that competition that she bowed out on. And since Simone left, left the team, they, couldn't, they had to be pretty much perfect because they no longer had a score that they could drop because Simone Biles was automatically that drop score. They ended up yeah. getting silver. Russia, or the ROC, came mm-hmm. in first. They got gold. USA manages to get silver, which I think is a win in its own right. What is your take? And I'm pretty sure she's out now. Like She, she stopped uh, competing, and she is being supportive. She's on the benches. You can see right, her. She's right. cheering on her teammates. But uh, people had to fill in a role rather quickly. Uh, what, what's your take on this? First and foremost, um, I, you we've said this on several occasions. You gotta be taking care of your mental. Um, I, I've never I, said that. I think mental is a sham. I don't believe. Uh, yeah, I think that's ridiculous. I think that. I mean, <laughs> now granted, now I, I do. Well, I do want it to be stated that. Um, yeah, you have to take care of that. But there's a difference between like when Osaka says, "Hey." I am going to take a mental health break because of the media um, and I'm going to gear up for the Olympics. Like that to me says like you're recognizing that you need to, you know, take care of your health in order for this big event. Now the Olympics, they come around once every four years. She is the greatest like gymnast ever. I I don't want to say that you have to push through everything because obviously that's, but, but it's just, if you were going to push through anything, you would assume it would be the Olympics. So I I have to guess that it was either something horrible for her or I, maybe she is just looking to be done and maybe coach or something. I, maybe she's done competing. That would be my take from this. Uh, what, what do you think? So I've seen a lot of people on Twitter. I've seen a lot of people comparing her to, well, maybe they didn't make the comparison, but she's the GOAT. Obviously, Michael Jordan has been he's the goat and they're like well what if jordan just quit on you know the bulls in the finals what if he you know just left in to be fair he didn't quit in the finals but he did go to play baseball he did but that was after that was after the season that was after the season ended i have seen that argument too that's a fucking stupid argument because that's like saying simone biles retires after the olympics right and maybe comes back afterwards but like he finished Michael Jordan finished the season and then retired. It's not like he quit in the middle of the finals. Okay. And there's also conspiracy theories that it was because of gambling debts and he was actually forced out of the NBA, but we're not going to go down that. (laughs) We're not going down that rabbit hole right now. I do want to stick with Simone Biles. I, I heard something and I can't remember who said it. Maybe Allie Raisman, but she was in an interview after Simone Biles bowed out and she said that gymnastics is not like other sports. It's not like baseball. It's not like basketball. It's not like football, where if you're not feeling 100%, you can just go through the motions and continue playing the game because you are doing things that are physically insane to do. Yeah, Somersaults, absolutely. flips, twirls. All this stuff. And if you're not 100% in the zone, you can seriously hurt yourself. I mean, it's not unfathomable to think that if you're not 100% locked in when you're doing those tumbles and doing the vault and doing all these other crazy acrobatics, that you can actually bow out of flips and actually break your neck, get hurt. We see it all the time in gymnastics. People get hurt all the time. So I do agree that gymnastics 
is unlike any other sport that we typically watch because it has that element of danger where if you're not 100% locked in, you don't have that mental capacity locked down, you could hurt yourself. Well, so and, and, for that reason, I think it's unfair right. to compare her to Jordan or to any other athlete and just say, well, what if someone just quit uh, during a game? Well, it's not the same thing. Right. It's not the same thing because of what I just said, and they can get seriously hurt. Well, I also want to say that uh, gymnastics is one of – it's like the if Patrick Mahomes goes out and throws 23 of 28, um, no one's going to go, hey, I mean, good job, and you won the game, but like that wasn't perfect. Gymnastics is literally – that wasn't perfect, so you know what I mean. Yeah. That's what it is. There's, and these there's girls have been training for little... this since they were like eight. You know, you know what I mean? It's like the pressure that gets put on Olympic female gymnasts is insanity. Um, again, you uh, if it was something small enough, I would hope that she'd be able to push through. Not just for like America or like, you know, but mostly for her because she – this is something America. that will <laughs> – Speaking of, did you see that – uh, Did you see that TikTok that was going around? It was uh, the U.S. beat um, China water polo. It was like 24 to 3 and the guy zoomed in on the score. He's like, everyone up. Up for the fucking anthem. Stand up. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see oh, it. Oh, man. Um, but, but just to put it – a nice bow around this conversation. Uh, I think it's just, I mean, the margin of error, you kind of just alluded to it. The margin of error when it comes to gymnastics is so small. You literally have to be perfect or you're not. Right. Right. And that also could be the difference of a good score or you breaking your neck. So if you're not a hundred percent in it, I, I don't blame S Simone. I'm sure. I mean, she's been in Olympic situations before. Yeah. This oh, isn't yeah. her first Olympics. This isn't her first high like stakes you know, trial or competition. Like she won gold in Rio. She's won like 20 gold world uh, medals uh, outside of the Olympics. I don't think it's really pressure. I think, well, I mean, it, it could be pressure, but I think also the media built her up. And so that is part of the pressure. But I think that it's within her right. And I, I don't think anything against her for taking, for, you know, taking, right. taking no, no, herself no. out because that's like we just said, it's, it, it could be the make or break of actually getting herself seriously hurt. So that's the only, and that's all oh, I got to say about that. True. But I also want to say, didn't Ledecky uh, lose her uh, event that everyone said that she was going to for sure win um, at the freestyle. Uh, so the last time we talked on Tuesday, she had just lost gold. She got silver, but she had just lost I can't remember what distance to that Australian girl. Right. And that's when the coach was going uh, like right. freaking out and going crazy. But she did win a gold medal since then. Yes. In another she did. event. Now, I don't know how many events she's running. There's every time I turn on the TV, there's something going on and I can't tell whether it's live, whether it happened yesterday, right. whether it happened tomorrow. I have no idea. Like the Olympic what Time we're showing you here is, is footage of Phelps 45 years ago. If, if if the Olympics is the Olympics is a black hole where time literally doesn't exist because I have no idea when this occurred. So she definitely got silver because I saw that race in, like live. She definitely won gold in another race because I saw it uh, in the headlines. I don't know what else what else came yeah. what else came and what else she lost i mean she got a gold she, she did got get a gold. gold okay she got a silver so, lay off of her andrew oh God, i'm sorry she had to be perfect now you know what i do want to talk she's about. not simone Biles, you know what i do okay. want to talk about though <laughs> somebody tested yeah. positive in the nfl for covid oh god and his name is do you have the picture up i do have the picture up okay well let me guess let me yeah. guess who it is well this is a little bit like our game. This is go fuck. It yourself. is kind of. It's so funny that uh, you. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Give me, give me some go fuck yourself hints. Um, <laughs> he's a quarterback. You have the image. Yeah, right I, I do. I do. He's image. a quarterback. Um, it's Deshaun Watson. No, what? He's also a running back. No, yes, Lamar? Lamar tested positive for COVID. Now, here's the thing. He already. Well, I mean, that's. 
he that's okay no it is okay but he already tested positive for covid back in the regular season last yeah. year didn't he you can't get it twice well you can't get it twice i have read that something is happening with his tests specifically that are coming back positive and um and there are a couple people because this is it's interesting because last year people were freaking out the re i'll tell you why this is like why i found this and why it's relevant when COVID was happening last year for fantasy purposes everyone was just freaking out and wondering how the hell they're going to manage games if players get COVID and do they work on the ir spots and all that sort of stuff but now right. that we're up with vaccinations and all that sort of stuff and the nfl is like saying they're a little not bit not cole beasley not cole beasley not cole beasley um now with that info coming out they feel like teams are going to be more likely to say hey if you're not vaccinated like you can't come to maybe certain events or because because you know you, we might have to forfeit a game which by the way same rules as last year if they couldn't reschedule games would have been forfeited by the team that very important yeah very it's important like, it's to just, note that's the exact same rules as last year and i don't see i don't see anything really changing uh, i think the nfl will try their best to reschedule uh, i think I so really too do. i mean i think where they might be a little less lenient when we get to week like 18 17 somewhere you know what i mean like if there's like no season left and something happens that I could see that potentially being an issue issue for them. But I do want to say that like, for example, Najee Harris, he is one of the rookies who has not gotten vaccinated yet. And he's wearing a, uh, he has to wear a significant or like an armband to signify that he is uh, not vaccinated at practice because I, they say that other people have the right to know in a contact sport like that are, you know, so now people in fantasy are like looking for these players and looking for a list to find out who's vaccinated, who's not. It's insane out there. But <laughs> looping back to Lamar, there are a couple of people who work in the medical field in the fantasy subreddits who are saying, like, I've seen this, like people are just testing positive um, and they're doing it over and over. And falsely, falsely. or falsely. Well, yeah, like they're like they're, just, they're testing positive and they don't the NFL doesn't know what they're going to do. Like they don't know how to handle I said it. this. I. Andrew, I'm so glad you brought this up. I can't believe I missed the news, by the way, because I am a huge Ravens fan. I love Lamar more than my own children, who I do not have yet. But I said this. I said this publicly, privately, kind of, <laughs> on the B3T Sports Slack channel. One of our one of our bloggers, Casey Moninghoff, okay, that he writes for Notre us. Notre Dame fan. He was... He was trying. Oh yeah, Notre Dame fan. Well, it, he goes by. Uh, I, I am. Know. He goes by many names. He goes by many names. Anyway, uh, he was saying that there's all these new rules and all this stuff, and people are gonna get, and the NFL is just going to cancel games. People are gonna get forfeited and stuff. I remember at least three incidences last season. There was a big thing preseason. I remember a bunch of false positives going on. Mm -hmm. It was like a, like 55 false positives, but this was preseason. And then I was like, okay, well, that's weird going into the season. I remember the Texans having, during the season, Texans having some cases of false positives. I remember the Colts having false positives. And I remember specifically Des, uh, Des, Bryant, Des Bryant had a false positive that like made him had a false retire. Positive, literally, literally <laughs> the hour before the game. They went to him an hour before the game and pulled him because of a false positive. This, I, I'm glad that these are the same rules as last year because it makes me, I'm, I'm fairly certain that right. if it's everything, last year went pretty smoothly. Like, yes, we had like the 49ers situation and yes, we had, yeah, to, we got Tuesday games. Out there. We got Tuesday night games. That and was stuff sick. Like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> if you really think about it, 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 we made it through, right? We made it through the other side. If COVID's not going away, obviously, not right now. And yes, like getting vaccinated will help the will help to solve the problem. But here's some other things. There's this new Delta variant that yep. pe that people who already got vaccinated can still get. You still have false positives, okay? Oh yeah, going on. Perfect example is Lamar that you that, just brought up. This is so not going away. It's not going. No, it's not going away. And not only that, but you can't expect teams to just forfeit and then people not getting their paycheck because of false positives or because they vaccinated and did all the right things but there's a delta variant that i mean this everything is so new that was my main thing with notre dame fan <laughs> in the b3t sports slack channel because he was saying 
that just get vaccinated. It solves all the problems. Or, you know, there's there's not that many cases about false positives. There were a few false positives. And, I mean, who knows what this Delta variant will do. Right. I think we just kind of... If, if this season, this 2021 season, goes just as well as the 2020 season, I'm totally fine with that. The 2020 season, we made it. I'm fine with it. That's totally right. fine with me. Um, but anyway, so that that's an interesting piece of news I kind of just wanted to bring up because um, obviously Lamar's electric. The league is better when he's in it. He's fucking electric. I hope they, of course he's oh, electric. I hope they, I, you know, I hope they... Uh, I want them. I'm glad to he got it, it out. out of the way now. Well, hopefully, I mean, who, who knows? Who like with this fucking constantly testing positive shit? But uh, the Look. the next bit that we're gonna talk about is because obviously, it's Aaron Rodgers time. Guess who showed up to fucking practice between last episode and this episode? I guess that means I'm dropping Jordan Love from my dynasty well, team. God damn it! I thought that was a really smart move. Not, I thought that was a really not so savvy fast. move by me. Well, watch yourself. Because I'm going to read you a quote here from uh, Aaron Rodgers. Because he had, I don't know if you saw this, he had a snarky press conference, which I fucking love. I am all about it. Because they restructured <laughs> they restructured his contract. So I believe, okay. so he's not committed to the team after 2021. Right? He's probably going to have to end up giving money That's back. That's this year, That's Andrew. this year, right? So after this year, he's not going to be committed to Green Bay. And I he, he says, if you can't commit to me past 2021... And I'm not a part of the recruiting process and free agency. If I'm not part of the future, then instead of being a lame duck quarterback, then let me move forward. He's just saying that, you know, if you don't want to plan for me being your QB, which is what they did with Jordan Love, he's like, I just don't want to be here. Cause he's like, I, he still thinks he can compete. And he's Aaron fucking Rodgers. He can compete until I see, I mean, if like, you can't handle me at my <laughs> lows. You don't deserve me at my highs. Right. And it's like, and he's saying this after an MVP season. Like, I, I just seriously can't believe that organization at all. It's unfucking believable. This man is obviously Hall of Fame. He's probably, he's definitely top five all time. I mean, like, the Rings conversation is like, it's, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It? But, it hurts. Like, dude, the accuracy that this man has had whilst maintaining, I mean, the, average league percentage uh for a touchdown percentage is around 4.3 4.4 over the entire league that's the percentage of passes that turn into touchdowns for a quarterback aaron Rodgers sits at around 5.8 over his whole career God damn. it's just it's insane the man doesn't miss the man has had no talent sometimes i mean like yeah Devonte, but I mean, it's not like some of these guys weren't even drafted to be all stars. I mean, Devonte Adams was on that team for a while before he. Well, what's that insane stat with like the first round pick? He oh, he's has... never th he's thrown a touchdown I think to one first round pick. It's Mercedes Lewis. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that's insane, dude. That is one hundred percent insanity. I remember hearing that stat last year and being like, "Huh? No chance. No chance." But I guess so. Um, yeah, man. Listen, I hope he plays. I'll drop Jordan Love. I don't even care. I hope he plays this year because the league is better with him in it. Yeah, obviously. Absolutely. And I love watching Bears fans squirm, dude. dude I yeah. love watching Bears fans squirm when he's in their conference. However, I'm getting sick and tired and just exhausted over the whole dramatic thing because it's not even it's not even real drama. No. Deshaun Watson. That could be real drama. Right. I mean, it was real drama at one point, and we'll see if it lingers or if it gets bigger. Antonio Brown, that was drama. Ben Roethlisberger, what he did a while back. Allegedly. That was drama. Allegedly. I should say. That was, that was drama. No, good. You're covering our asses. That was drama. I don't give a fuck. Like, what is so? It wasn't juicy even, about and it's like this? it wasn't even drama with OJ because he was done with football. You know what I mean? Like, that's not exactly. Drama. Yes. Okay. Well, that that's, that's more drama than this. No. Yeah. So, here's, well, again, so those are the two big points of the NFL at the moment. I want to talk a little bit more about the NFL because it's starting to get to that time. Like, I'm hungry for it. I signed up for it's another. I'm in another two leagues. Wait, what'd you say? I said, is this bottom of the barrel? I thought if you were going to start bottom of the barrel. No, no, no. You should put up some little barrel. I know. I'm, I'm going to make a bottom of the barrel graphic, and you're all going to love it. But we're really going to talk about how I'm sick and tired of these 
fucking beat reporters sending everyone stubbed their toe at the first day of training camp. I'm so it's like not first news. Toe's a real injury. Oh Andrew. my god! Listen to this fucking thing. <laughs> this was this uh, uh, something that got sent out. Travis Kelsey is leaving practice early with a trainer. That's it. That is what was sent out as a notification. Like they got to do it. They got to do it because that's how they that's how they to get do. Their money. Now, like when these other bar- bottom of the barrel things come up that you hate, that everyone hates, but like at least for me, I can go. Okay, it's not so early in the season yet that like these things are pointless because the coaches are thinking about them, but we're at the point of the season. Now, now that, now that camp has started, these are going to mean so much less. I mean, there's a couple, you got to really dig through the shit to get there. Like Dak left with a shoulder soreness the other day. And I was, everyone's like, yeah, whatever. turns out he got an MRI on it. It's still just soreness. They say he's going to hold back. We're not going to push him in July, but like, that could be dangerous. I mean, you just fucking came off a almost could be a, f- a tumor. Wow, well, I mean, it sure tumor. could be. <laughs> it could be anything. It could even be a boat. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, and here's another thing. When they're talking about third round ra- or third year receivers that have been good, like Marquise Brown specifically, they have an, a tweet. They're like, "This could really be his year," and it very well could be. But I don't get how you can copy and paste the same exact phrase for three years in a row. For You know what I mean? They just do that all the time. It's called laziness. Time. It is. It's called it laziness. Is. And I, th- I like Marquise Brown. He's a fucking burner, baby. It's, Holly- it, it's Hollywood Brown's season. It's Hollywood <laughs> it's Brown's always, remember that game against the Dolphins how many years ago? Man, that was something. It was two. It was two years ago. Actually. Yeah, we were together for that. Uh, we were. Let's see here. Other in a relationship, yes, we were we together. Were. We've moved past that, but um, Odell is on the field again. Uh, good for him. I can't do this. Are you actually? Is this <laughs> we're morphing into bottom of the barrel? Are you like somehow sneakily? Are you sneakily transitioning into bottom of the barrel without having me uh, notice that we're doing bottom of the barrel? Well, I can't do this. Uh, yes. No. No. I think we're. I think we're done. That's all with bottom of the barrel. Okay. Okay, the grade I give it an F okay. as always. Excellent. Uh, now I think it's horse racing time. Ooh, yes, it definitely can be horse racing time. Now here's the deal with this: it's a little bit different than the last time. So when we watched it before, we got to hit play at the same time. We'll still hit play at the same time, but the way it's set up, you've already seen this race, correct? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. So last episode, I raced one of my horses. Uh, Z8 Elite Nakamoto. Her name is Fingers. She excels the 2200-2400 meter races. We had not seen the uh, the race. She came in second. It was a it was electric. I've already seen this one because uh, I've already seen all my races today. And the next race doesn't happen until like 2 a.m. tonight. I'm not staying up for that. I'm just watching in the morning. So I want to highlight a race that happened today it, it happened today andrew this right. isn't something from the archives this happened today my my new horse newish horse her name is a choice scotch i didn't name her but That's it's an all fine. right name it's fine yeah it's fine. now it's fine it's fine i bought her she's a genesis horse a z10 buterin i bought her from Zed Run, when they did one of their drops, I was actually one of the lucky ones. I actually got a horse. Andrew didn't get a horse. I have one. Didn't even get I an horse. Well, when are you going to race Wamba? Um, that's actually a good question. Again, like I keep saying, like I want to do it live. I want to do a stream for it. Um, well, but we've already had two. Well, these are just videos. I'm talking about live stream, like where people can hop in and see it happening on the screen i think you need a better horse because no because like... it's gonna be great because the fact that it's a shitty like a, possibly a shitty horse like it just matches it's my whole de- vibe i think de- i think it's definitely a shitty horse it matches my good. vibe it'll be fun you'll laugh they'll laugh somebody will donate fifty dollars and be like go buy a new horse <laughs> yeah and then you're just gonna get another shitty ass horse yeah, with fifty dollars I'll, I'll own them all and the cycle continues okay now, so uh Anyway, I was not going to race her. I was just going to keep her unraced because unraced Genesis horses go for a pretty penny these days. But you know what goes even more? You know what goes even more than an unraced Genesis horse? A Genesis horse that fucking wins. A good Genesis horse. A good Genesis horse that fucking wins. A choice scotch 
has raced over 30 times. God, so many she has, races. she has, that's not even. Not no, even. it's not, but it, it, it is for like what her stats are. Okay. Yes. I'm about to read her stats and then we're going to watch a race that she ran in today. She's raced in 34 races. She has won 20.5% of the time. That's coming in first. She's come in first or second 35% of the time. And she's come in first, second, or third. Remember, those are the only positions that pay 41% of the time. How often is that horse coming in fourth? Do you have those numbers? She's come in fourth twice. That's insane. 5.9% of the time. All right. All right. All right. Now, her average odds are 8.8, <clears throat> and she has an ROI of 96%. That's insane. Ladies and gentlemen, a choice scotch. Andrew, pull up the race. This is from today. We are live with the race. Um, now, again, this is different than last time before. I would skip for you guys, um, but because of the way I'm doing it this time, you can't. Uh, Boats and Garden Hose, that's a funny name. Roman Pierce, also funny. Immersion Therapy is a cool name. Boonshine is funny. The <laughs> Babylonian, all right. John yeah. Cena, good. Where is he? I don't see Kona be hottie. King Pirate Luffy. That's a very funny yeah. joke. That's an advanced joke. Uh, a Choice Scotch. Sweet Glazer. There we go, number nine. Don't Stop Me Now. The Inner Light. So there you are. Mm. Now, um, this, is this the 1,600-meter? Uh, she excels in this 1,600-meter. That is her best distance. So you've got her at, what is that, place nine. And Let me know when it, it just when kicked it off. Actually goes. We're going right now. All right, cool. Um, and what can, okay, so what is this LA Jubilee Classic? Uh, what was this? Uh, I'm assuming, is this a five-star or a five, class five? This is class four. Class She's four. moved up. Holy She's moved up in the world. This is, shit. Yeah, this is a class four. Uh, King Pirate Luffy. I don't get it. You said that that's an advanced joke. No, I was what saying your joke about John Cena was in, uh, jo the, the uh -huh. Pirate Luffy. That's an anime reference. That's just. Is it? Yeah, from One Piece. King, uh, King Luffy, King of the Pirates. Yeah, it went over my head, but the John Cena joke was funny. I'm glad you picked up I've on it. I've talked about John Cena several times uh, today, actually. It's kind of bizarre. When I would play uh, Quiplash of, in you know games of that nature from... That's a fun fucking game, dude. Great that is a game. fun game. I, would, I used to make my name Juanita Senorita, and then Senorita, C-E-N-U-R-I-T-A, because I'm a genius. Someone's pushing up. Someone's pushing up. Don't stop me now and immersion therapy. See, see, but look, choice. Look at that. That's when she decides to make her move. You can kind of see her gaining right. speed, you know, and she's, she's just going to work her way up. Look like she just is just hammering the track, dude. She's just, this isn't like one of those fast, like explosions that we'll see sometimes from horses. This is a slow it's grind like racing from strikes. the back to the front this is just a slow grind from the back to the front look at this, this is gonna Boom. be close I'm a there you go you. <laughs> <laughs> hey that was sick no it I... doesn't matter choice scotch wins 20 percent win rate that's insane that's very good i hope it continues i think um god i don't know i really want there to be uh i can't wait until we eventually get to the spot where like you can kind of customize the horses a little bit like, you know, with Mountain so? Mountain Dew stickers and Monster they stickers. They do have skins. They do they already? Do skins. Or is that just they in do. production? That's cool. I have not nope. seen those yet. They already have skins. They did a deal with um, Stella Artois. Uh, so you could bid on a Genesis horse with a skin. Now, the skin, it can match any horse. So you're just... You can literally put a skin on any horse, the so it is customizable. And they also just teamed up with Atari, and they had these are really sick. These skins are very cool. It's like all the classic Atari games, like Centipede, Breakout, That's right. I Asteroid. forgot they did that. Yeah, it's it's very cool. Do I... Space Invaders? They they have all these custom skins 
for these classic Atari games. It's very cool. While we're talking about it, I have two questions. One is Ed Run. Have we looked at Mike Tyson's horse yet? Has it raced? It's a good question. I know the name of it, so I will look it up right now. If you don't know, Mike Tyson bought a Zed Run horse. He's actually very ingrained in the NFT community. That's he bought a uh, yeah, he bought a Cool Cats uh, NFT. Um, it's like his profile picture on Twitter right now, and he obviously bought a Zed Run horse. And he literally tweeted the other day and was just like, "Yo, I'm looking for some hot crypto art. Who's like a really good art?" He's a, he's a really good artist in the space. And so everyone was like swarming to him. Uh, my second question is with, I don't remember what it's called. The other crypto thing that uh, you were looking at, I can't think of what it's called. It's like where you have the crypto raiders. Crypto raiders. Yes. Have you, have you done that yet? Or are you just going to hold them? I have already done my first dungeon. Uh-huh. Uh, you get, so this was a test dungeon, but sure. still a dungeon. Nonetheless, everything worked uh pretty swimmingly actually it was very smooth Hell yeah. uh so i have three characters i got to name them i got to customize their looks um and then i uh put them into a dungeon and you can do a dungeon three times a week so i already did all three for all three characters so nine in total nine dungeons and you put them in and it's, it's just a classic dungeon crawler uh they just the 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 dungeon on their own and how they does find it treasure work, like, do you just watch it or is it like do, does it randomly go and then it sends you like a video so you can see how it went or is it like... no it's live so like it's you live. Okay. enter the dungeon and it's just like a, a playthrough that you'd see on a it's they use eight bit graphics you know like yeah no i mean graphics. that's cool i i actually dig that style a lot same um same. i, I really would like i would style. really love it imagine if you could watch other people's that's going on Right. And then you could bet on if they were going to live or die, like in the dungeon. Right. That would be sick. That will be, that is definitely in the future. They're going to implement, there were no bosses or monsters to fight. Uh, it was just pretty much watching an AI character go through a dungeon sure, and, and find, yeah, and find treasure. And they, each treasure had like a percentage of how rare it was. Um, so it, I got some inventory. Like I got some like red tunics, uh, some robes, like something that I could wear. Sure. So that's pretty much what I did. I put them on my little raiders afterwards. Oh, but yeah. as the game gets more advanced, it's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to fight monsters. You're going to team up for harder dungeons. And you can die. <laughs> so And you, you can your die. Your character dies. You're not getting it back. So you got to be careful. Iron Mike Tyson, which is the name of Mike Tyson's horse, it's a Z19 legendary Buterin. It has no races. He has not raced. It has no races. <clears throat> no races. Unraced. Interesting. I mean, like, I, I guess I don't blame him. I mean, he just bought it for the namesake, I would assume, at least to start. Um, because it's fucking Iron Mike Tyson. That's its name. I mean, how do you not buy that? I'm sure he's he's uh I don't really know. I, there, you see a lot of celebrities enter the NFT space uh, and do a cash grab, which is like, hey, like, look at me. I'm part of you. Like, I am I got Zed Run Horse. I got a cool cat, you know, NFT. I'm really cool. I'm one of you. Buy my NFT because that's cool, too. And then, you know, you buy their NFT and then they leave the space and they just take your money. It happens a lot. It's happened a lot in the past. So there is speculation that that is what mike tyson is doing i don't know i guess we'll see yeah that's i mean who, if he's who for real knows but i do we'll see if he's for real yeah uh anyway uh the only other thing i have to say about nft is t top shot blows that's i it. you owe me andrew mm. you owe me the luca Doncic. i'd love to give it to you i would put it up put it up on the screen i what can you put it and show uh, the people what what the, clip what the is? top shot moment looks like i it okay i can good. i can but i'm not doing it today it's gonna i i can get it really uh, cool i can make it look fucking no, awesome forget it andrew we'll, no, we'll do that uh, we'll do that next episode that's a little teaser for next week um but you I'm know sure people are on the edge of their seats but you know what is on the screen right now is it grapefruit it is a grapefruit Let's go. All right. We're out. Normally, you can only get this technique in one of my classes, but I wanted to share this with you because I believe every man should get grapefruited. When you grapefruit your man, it's going to feel as if you are giving him head and fucking him at the same time. Let me tell you about
time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Valentino summers and wave runners. Chains on my niggas like slave runners, drug dealers anonymous, Valentino summers and wave runners. Chains on my niggas like slave runners, drug dealers anonymous. How many Madonnas can that Mazda fit? My brick talk is more than obvious, it's ominous. Garage is the phantom, who's ghost and goblins. Blonde Mohawk the collection, I'm Dennis Rodman. No better feeling would he ever get than being grapefruited. No better feeling would he ever get Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. Time to hit the showers, cause baths are for babies. <laughs>